This episode of Triggered is brought to you by Vikings War of Clans. Got my battle axe here to celebrate the occasion. A fan sent me this, which I don't think is a, a good idea. This is definitely not something I should be trusted with. But, uh, you know, <laughs> hey, that would have been way cooler if it just stuck, you know? I'm not that strong, though. Uh, I can't be trusted with that, but what I can be trusted with is Vikings War of Clans. All you gotta do is play the game for five minutes to see why I'm so addicted to it. I've made no secret that I'm not very much into modern games, but this one's really great because it harkens back to the top PC strategy games of the 90s and early 2000s, but it doesn't take a huge time commitment like those games did. You can play it during a five minute break at work or on the toilet or wherever you got a few minutes to spare. You pit Viking clans against each other in a huge battle between Eastern and Western coalitions and it's just a huge fun factor. A huge, super massive battle is coming this month and we need you Yes, you. Come join me in the game where my nick is TJ the Destroyer. As you all know, supporting my sponsors helps to support this channel, so support my channel by downloading Vikings from the links below and get a uh, special bonus of 200 gold for uh, a fast and successful start. And with that done, roll that intro. Roll it! I said roll the intro, Paul! Sorry, it's rolling! On the last episode of Triggered, I talked about Rick and Morty fans who take the show ever so slightly too seriously uh, by breaking into hysterics over McDonald's not having sufficient amounts of Szechuan dipping sauce for their chicken McNuggets during a single day promotional event. Could there be a worse fan base than the Rick and Morty fan base? Well, thankfully there is. Apparently a homeowner in Albuquerque, New Mexico is being forced by circumstance to put a fence around their home to prevent fans of Breaking Bad from throwing pizza on their roof. The homeowners live in the famous Breaking Bad house where Walter White, played by Brian Cranston, threw a pizza on the roof in episode two of season three. Even though the show went off the air years ago, the house remains a popular tourist destination where a lot of tourists not only harass the homeowners, but also emulate Walter White's famous pizza toss. The show's creators have made several pleas to fans to stop harassing these poor homeowners, but the pleas have fallen on deaf ears and people continue to flock to the house armed with big old Italian pies, what to throw upon the rooftops. If that were my house, I'd be exploiting the situation. I'd be selling tickets for that shit. Step right up! Be just like your hero, Walter White, and relive that pivotal moment in the story when he tossed the pizza on the roof. Just $15. Come one, come all. Not only that, I'd laminate that motherfucking roof, keep it super clean, so I could eat the pizzas, you know, without them getting all that roof grit all over them. I wish my fucking problem in life was people throwing pizza at me, you know? As long as it didn't have pineapple on it, because even if you pick the fucking pineapple off, you can't get that residue off the cheese. It's like the weirdest topping, because even if you pluck it all off, it still tastes just as present. Uh, anyway, you guys don't give a fuck about that. You care about Anita Sarkeesian. That's right. Anita Sarkeesian recently decided, hey, it's 2017. Probably about time for me to get a Twitter, I guess. So here's how she decided to start it off. Let's start this new account off with a bang. I thought Blade Runner 2049 kinda sucked. It's a film about oppression and slave labor that centers white men, only using people of color as their, and their cultures as background texture. It's relentlessly brutal to women, killing off so many of them in ways that serve only to fuel the story arcs of the central male characters. A love interest of Officer K is pure male wish fulfillment fantasy, and the film never critically examines the underlying gender dynamics. Its attempt at discussing what it means to be human ultimately fails because it was unwilling to examine the sexism and racism it perpetuates. Woo! Well, that's a very stock Anita Sarkeesian review, isn't it? Point at something and say, that's sexist. Whether it be a movie or a video game or what have you, point at it and say, it's sexist and it denigrates women. Well, she's not alone in calling Blade Runner 2049 sexist either. Several publications have put out articles that push a similar narrative. Uh, so as I've always done, I will respectfully 
and I, I mean that sincerely, explain why I disagree with the assessment. First of all, the movie didn't suck. It was, atmos it was an atmospheric masterpiece with brilliant sets and costume designs, subtle performances from almost all of the actors. It continued the story of Blade Runner without destroying the ambiguity of the original film. And it was just a dense and weighty film. The cinematography was excellent. The storytelling was excellent. I honestly couldn't heap enough praise on this movie. For my money, it surpasses the original. Anita finds herself uh, vexed that the casting wasn't uh, diverse enough and that the central characters were all Caucasian. She found that particularly hypocritical for a film that centers around slavery and oppression in a future dystopia. Well, the oppressed class in Blade Runner is not a skin color, it's a class of artificially created humans called replicants. Making them black or Chinese, in my opinion, neither bolsters nor hinders that message. Uh, Anita complains that the film wantonly kills off women in brutal ways just to further the story of the white male protagonists. She also opines about Officer K's love interest being a male wish fulfillment fantasy. Uh, what a disservice, I think, to the fine actresses who were featured in the film, uh, all of whom gave terrific performances that brought to life genuine characters with relatable emotions. Anna de Armas plays the holographic girlfriend of Officer K. She's one of uh, Anita, she's the one that Anita calls the um, male wish fulfillment fantasy. And well, yeah, she's playing that. The whole point is that she's a holographic girlfriend for people who can't get laid. But because both she and Officer K are creations of science, her a hologram and he a replicant, their relationship takes on this tragic yet beautiful air of, we're both artificially created beings, but we can share something genuine. K never treats her as though she were anything less than himself. And if her existence creates a sense of existential discomfort, that's because it's fucking supposed to. Sylvia Hoax is fucking phenomenal as Love, the replicant servant of Jared Leto's uh, Neander Wallace. She's flat out one of the best villains in cinema and perhaps the greatest female villain of all time. If she doesn't win an Oscar for Best Supporting Actress, she was fucking robbed, okay? Sorry if this video is turning into a Blade Runner 2049 review. By the way, check out the Cinema for Cynics channel for more reviews. But I really want everyone to see it. It's just one of the best films I've seen in quite some time, and hey, if you see it more the way Anita does than I do, or you see it some other way entirely, that's great. A film that has something to say should by its very nature inspire discussion. I'm just adding my voice to the conversation. But enough of that pretentious shit. 100% proof dinosaurs never existed. Dino sex is not only comical, it's physically impossible. Ugh, can't get it in, baby. Just, ah, uh, keep trying, but just won't. Reach! Try and beat my flawless logic and you will fail. I think I'm being trolled, but just in case I'm not, why exactly can't dinosaurs have sex? Because they have long tails and short stubby legs? Okay, well here's an alligator. It exists, it's alive. It's been alive since the time of the dinosaurs, in fact. Many generations of alligators have been able to breed with one another. Same for bearded dragons. However bearded dragons fuck, I'm willing to bet that dinosaurs fucked in a similar manner. It's World Obesity Day, middle finger. PSA, fat phobia is violence. Fat folks don't die from being fat and fuck you if you don't think we deserve to exist. Okay, so first of all, fat phobia is not violence. Violence is violence. Physically harming another person is violence. Hurting their feelings might be rude or mean-spirited, but it's not violence. Saying fat phobia is violence is like saying not picking up your dog's shit is genocide. No, it's, it's rude and it's a dick move. If you refrain from being so hyperbolic, your message would probably be more powerful. Like if you said fat phobia is rude, you'd probably have way more people taking you seriously or at least hearing you out. Statements like fat phobia is violence are hard to swallow. Unlike the live piglet that you obviously ate for lunch. And I'm not fat phobic, mind you, because I'm fat too. Look, look, see, look how fat I am. Look at this. I'm fat as fuck, totally fat. Fat folks don't die from being fat. Okay, but uh, obesity has been linked with high blood pressure, which is the leading cause of strokes. 
uh, high blood sugar, heart disease, sleep apnea, diabetes, certain types of cancer, whole host of fucking problems related to obesity. And that, that's all just fucking science. As much as it might emotionally satisfy us to believe that being fat can be healthy, it's not and it can't. Uh, and your statement of fuck you if you think we don't deserve to exist. Uh, I don't think anyone is against the right of fat people to exist. There's tons, no fat joke intended, of fat people walking the earth, leaving deep indentations as they go. And I can't think of a single time historically when a genocide of fat people has been executed or even proposed. There are people who are concerned about fat people. There are people who dislike fat people, but there's very few supporters of fat genocide. Although it would be really easy to lure us to the ovens. I do admit that. It's like, is that blueberry muffins? You know? And uh, think about how big they'd have to dig the mass graves, too. You know, skinny people are lazy. They don't want to do all that work. And the proof they're lazy, and I know they try to turn that around on us, but the proof that they're lazy is they can't even be bothered to get up and eat. All right, that's triggered for October 14th, 2017. If you liked it, please subscribe to my channel and turn on the alerts. And please share this video with everyone on Earth. Share it, share it around, everywhere. Every fucking place on Earth should know about this video. Every person, if you fucking walk up to a random motherfucker in Guatemala and ask him if he's seen this video, he should have seen it. Just do that for me. Share this video around. Do it to keep me fat, for fuck's sake. I love you all. Except for you, Carl. Yeah, that's right, I know about you. I can see you. A lot of people don't know this, but when you watch a YouTuber, they can also watch you. It's a feature they give to all the channels over a million subs. I know what you fucking did during this fucking video, Carl. I saw everything, and I'm telling the police. You know what the fuck you did. Every dude named Carl watching this freaked out for a second. And every dude named Carl with schizophrenia watching this probably is hiding in their closet right now, clutching a Remington, waiting for the FBI to show up. So, Carl with schizophrenia, I was just joking, it was a gag, sorry. I'm TJ Kirk. Peace the fuck out!